Okay. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Oh my God. Hello. Good evening. Hello. Pleased to see you again, teacher. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Okay. We are Hi. ready to receive the class. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> uh, I want to tell you that I have finished uh, uh, working in the platform. Oh, all of the um, the items, everything. Yes, I believe. <laughs> oh wow! Uh, because I that's have, good. I have um, one hundred percent. Oh wow! That's really nice. Okay, thank you, teacher. You're welcome. <clears throat> thank you. <laughs> Okay, um, the last week we were talking about um, adverbs of quantity and we were talking about adverbs and determiners. Now we are going to finish um, the part two. So we are going to talk about indirect questions. We are going to talk about how we can do some questions when we are in the city. And after that, we are going to have an exercise. Then we are going to develop the new topic that is adjectives and nouns. But today we are just going to learn about adjectives, uh, some examples and some uh, words that we can use as an adjective. So, to begin, we are going to see an example of the indirect questions. And we are going to talk about what is that and how can we do it or use it in our daily life. We have the example here. Excuse me, could you tell me where the nearest station is? And we have a person in the street. Certainly, it's along that road on the right. Thank you. And do you know if there is a supermarket near here? Yes, there is one next to the station. Thank you very much for your help. So in this example, we are using a very polite language. We are asking for directions when we are in the city. So in this case, I will write um, explanation about this kind of questions. I used indirect questions when I'm asking When I'm asking for help in the street, because they are very polite. In this uh, phrase, we have this one as our keyword. I am going to do this because I need to talk about the, the word polite. So I am saying that I use indirect questions when I'm asking, when I'm asking for help in the streets. Asking for help in the streets because they are very polite. So uh, when I am um, asking for help, asking for um, directions, asking for something that I need in the uh, city, I use this kind of questions because they are very polite. I am trying to be uh, something really good, uh, 
that I'm not scaring people. So, utilizamos este eh, tipo de preguntas en la ciudad cuando necesitamos ayuda para una dirección. ¿Por qué? Porque estamos siendo amables. In that case, I am using that questions because I need someone that can help me to find some um, places. So, I'm going to questions. Start with a phrase like this is the beginning of our uh, question. Who cool. you tell me? Who you tell me? Or do you know? Okay, when we are using and direct questions, we uh, start the phrase with those uh, um, phrases. Could you tell me or do you know? Cuando eh, utilizamos las, eh, este tipo de preguntas, las comenzamos con could you tell me o con la frase do you know? Podría decirme, sabes? When we are talking with someone that is not a friend or that is not um, someone that I know, uh, we are talking about someone that we find on the street, we have to be very polite. So we are going to ask them using, could you tell me please where the library is? Or hello, do you know where the library is? No, we are going to say, Hey, tell me where the library is. La diferencia con estas frases, cuando utilizamos esos inicios de frases, es que cuando encontramos a alguien en la calle que nosotros no conocemos, como es la mayoría de los casos, no vamos a llegar diciéndole, mira, decime dónde está la, la biblioteca, o mira, decime dónde está el banco, porque eh, vamos a sonar bastante rudo, ¿verdad? Bastante pesados. En cambio, si utilizamos, could you tell me, or do you know, Estamos dando la pauta para decirle a la persona que estamos siendo amables y queremos una información. So, you have to use, could you tell me, or do you know, to ask for something when you talk with someone in the streets. So, we have some examples. Number one, with a direct question. Where is the bank? And number two, um, changing that direct question to an, an indirect question, because we have the base in this case, where is the bank? So I have to change the phrase to uh, sound more polite. In this case, we are using uh, the uh, start. Cool, you tell me where the bank is. Is the same phrase, is the same question, but we are changing uh, the, um, maybe we can say it like that, the tone of voice or the way we ask. In this case, I have this question as simple as possible, but it's, it sounds uh, like something good and uh, like we are angry. Where is the bank? So we are just asking where is the bank, but we are not sound like someone polite. In this case, I change this. That is, um, and this one. So changing this, we sound more polite when asking something. Tenemos los dos ejemplos. ¿Dónde está el banco? 
si alguien llega y nos dice dónde está el banco, nosotros hasta posiblemente nos podemos asustar y decir, bueno, no le voy a decir dónde está el banco, le voy a decir que no sé. Pero si alguien llega y me dice, eh, ¿podría decirme dónde está el banco? That is something really different in the way that people are asking something. So, the indirect questions are something like that. Being very polite with someone in, in the street, someone is strange. So, we have some exercises right now. I have um, a Google Doc where you can find some, um, some phrases that you are going to change to indirect questions. So I will send you the link to the document where you will find some questions. So you have to change uh, the question to make them uh, indirect questions. Vamos a hacer un ejercicio. Tengo un documento en Google Docs. Les voy a mandar el enlace. Van a encontrar ahí preguntas eh, numeradas. Ustedes ven un espacio bastante grande entre preguntas. Y van a escribir cómo cambiarían esa pregunta para hacerla este tipo de preguntas, las indirect questions. Ya decíamos que preguntas comienza con could you tell me or do you know? So I am going to send you the link to the group so you can go there and write your questions. So you have the link there and you will find some uh, questions. So let me change the screen because I want to uh, show you the document, this one. You will find something like this. So give me time to share this. Take him some time. So you will find something like this, like a document. Um, you will find some questions. In this case, we have a direct question exercise, present simple tense, change the direct questions into indirect questions. Use, can you tell me? Vamos a cambiar las, las preguntas que tenemos ahí a preguntas eh, indirectas. Usando can you tell me, podría decirme, no could, sino can. Can you tell me, vamos a utilizar el can. You have a lot of space to write your uh, question using can you tell me, because we are using present, not past, in this case. Because cool is the past of can. And if you go down, you can find another questions. We have, let me see how many questions do we have? We have, let me see, 20. We have 20 questions. There are 20 questions. And I am seeing your names in the screen, so don't worry. I guess I have a people in the document. So you can find 20, 20 questions to change. The first one is, where does she play tennis? So you have to change it and add some uh, words in the beginning of the question. Teacher, excuse me. Um, uh, have I, I can write in the document. You can write. It says uh -huh. it's uh, private or something like that. Dice que es privado o, o no le permite escribir nada más. 
No. Escribir. You can write in the document? No. Yes. Yes, I can. Um, let me see. I will um I will copy the Tiene que tiene, tiene, tiene que instalar una aplicación, partner. Okay, okay let me see. Let me see. Uh, I will um, copy the exercises and I will upload a document in the group where you can uh, write, not in the Google Doc, just in a Word page. So let me, give me a second. Okay. No, I think that you have to pick up the pen in the, down on the page, when you pick the pen, they start the the table, and you will write wherever you want. Yes, but I can. I can to download the app. Okay, just give me a second. I am I am copied um the Los demás que se pueden escribir en el documento de uh the Google Docs, you can uh, your, I will send the document to the ones that can uh, write in there. I'm working on that, so don't worry. Um, I can write, teacher. You can write in the document? Yes, I, I download the app. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Excuse me, teacher. Tell me. Yeah, in the um, Could you tell me? In that Dennis? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. And the first one. Okay, let me let me explain something. In this case, we are using uh, the present. So in this case, yeah, in the, the number person. one, uh, someone asked for the number one. Can you tell me where she played tennis? And you were talking about number, let me see. Um. Number, number, number. And they say, could you tell me where she played tennis? Ya no se pone, oh. por ejemplo, could you tell me where does she play tennis? Ya, ya no. no se pone así. No, in that case, can you tell me where she played tennis? Tennis. Ah, okay, Just okay, like okay, that. Okay. No, not the dots. Okay. Be sure I have Tell a me. question. Tell me. Why the, the number one? Oh, no, sorry. Why the number one? Mm -hmm. uh, include that. Why? In the in the question, where does she play tennis? Where yeah. does? In the yeah. case you are asking, what is the? Mm -hmm. uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, in that case, you are asking the place where she play tennis. Donde ella juega tennis? Where does she play tennis? Does in that case is an auxiliary, like um, the auxiliary that we were talking about um, in the uh, past classes. So in this case, does is just an auxiliary in this case. So when we are changing the phrase and we are making our questions, we change that and we say, could you tell me where she played tennis? <coughs> 
changing the does because we have the can. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Teacher, una pregunta. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Usamos can you tell me or could you tell me? In this case, we are using can you in present. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Teacher. Tell me. Eh, yo estoy haciendo el ejercicio en, en físico. No lo estoy haciendo en el documento. No hay problema. No, that's okay. okay. I will send you the, this document to the group. So don't worry. Okay. Okay, I have here the document for the ones that can write in the Google Doc. So I will send you to the group to, you can uh, have access to it. Let me see here. Okay, let's see. For tennis, could you tell me where she played tennis? In this case, we are going to change the time. And tell me, again, can you tell me where she plays? Again. Can you tell me where she can play? She play tennis, number two. Can you tell me where she? Here we have something missing. She plays tennis. In this case, we are not using this. Okay, can you tell me where she played tennis? Can you tell me where she plays? 
we are using a third person. So we are using the S at the end. The number two, does he live in Paris? Can you tell me? Can you tell me if he lives in Paris? Good. Can you? We are changing the time. Can you tell me if? If he, in this case, is he lives in Paris? Can you tell me if he, again, we are changing this, lives in Paris? Can you tell me if he lives, third person? We have the S at the end. Can you tell me if he lives in Paris? Can you tell me if he lives in Paris? Can you tell me if he lives? Can you, we are using, can you tell me? Can you tell me if he lives in Paris? Again, we are changing this. Can you? Tell me if he lives in Paris. Can you tell me if he lives in Paris, okay? Can you tell me if he, we are deleting this one. Can you tell me if he, can you tell me, Lips here. Can you tell me where does he live? But in this case is, can you tell me if he, if he, Lips and Paris. Is she hungry? Number three. Can you tell me if if she if she is? Can you tell me if in this case if she is hungry. Puede decirme si ella está hambrienta. Can you tell me if she is hungry? Can you tell me if she, in this case we are changing to that, if she is hungry. Would you tell me, can, we are changing the time. Can you tell me if she's hungry? Can you tell me? Mm -hmm. If she's hungry. Tell me if, if she is, if she is, can you tell me if she is? If you is, can you tell me if she is hungry? Remember that you have to um, write the question mark at the end of the question. Can you tell me if she is hungry? There is a problem here. No, we are not using. Uh, huh. 
Can you tell me if she, if she's hungry? Can you tell me if she is? Letter B. What is this? Number four. Can you tell me what this is? What this is? Mm -hmm. Can you tell me what? Uh, okay, we'll change this. This is to this place. Okay. Can you tell me what this is? Changing this. Okay. Can you tell me what again? This is reaching down. And you tell me what this is. This, this, this. this is. Can you tell me? Again, we are going to delete this one. Change this. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me see. Can you tell me? Mm, I guess we are I don't have anything here. Okay. Can you tell me what this is? Can you tell me what this is? Okay. Can you tell me what this is? Number five, do they work in Canada? Can you tell me if, 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 we are adding if. If they work, in this case, we are not using the ING. In Canada. Can you tell me if they work in Canada? In this case, we are not using this one. Can you tell me if they work, just work? In, in Canada, okay. Can you? Can you tell me if they were in Canada? Can you tell me again? Can you tell me if they were in Canada? If, I guess we have some troubles here. we in. Canada, can you tell me if they were in Canada? In, can you tell me if they? Work, wait. Where in Canada? Can you tell me if they were in Canada? Again, the question mark. Don't forget that. Can you tell me if they were in Canada? Can you tell me if they work? We are not using the S in the verb because we are not using a third person. We are using the plural, so we are not using it. Number six. When do John and Luke meet? Can you tell me when John and Luke meet? Can you tell me when John, we are not using the auxiliaries here because we have a can. John and Luke meet. 
when John and Luke meet? Do you know, in this case, can you tell me? Again. Can you tell me? This is a short question, but in this case, we are changing it. Oh, yeah. John and Luke meet. Can you tell me when John and Luke meet? Okay, good. Can you tell me when they met? The whole sentence. John and Luke. Can you tell me when John and Luke meet? Can you tell me when John with capital letter? Because those are nouns. Can you tell me when John and Luke meet? Can you tell me when John and Luke meet? Can you tell me, okay. John and Luke with capital letter. Proper name. Tell me. John. We have to change this look with capital letter. Can you tell me what is happening here? No. When look and when John and look. John and look meet. Is he a lawyer? Number seven. Can you tell me if he's if he's a lawyer? Can you tell me if, if, if here we are changing this? If he is a lawyer. Okay. No. Can you tell me? We are not using do. Oh. Can you tell me if she's, in this case, is he? We are talking about he. He is a lawyer. Can you tell me if, 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 if he is a lawyer, can you tell me if he, is a lawyer, can you tell me if, if he again is a lawyer? Can you tell me if he is a lawyer? Can you tell me if he is a lawyer? Again, we are not using the Teacher, tengo so, una pregunta. Yeah. Eh, tengo una duda. Eh, ahí, este, no sé, yo creo que me confundí. No sé. Mm -hmm. Eh, sería, no sería al revés, is he, can you tell me if, in mm, this case, no, se, no se podría, ¿verdad? No, in this case, we are using the can you for the question. Cuando utilizamos el verbo be para la pregunta, si sí ponemos is he, but in this case, no es el verbo to be al inicio de la pregunta, así que en este caso no podemos poner is he, porque no lo estamos utilizando como pregunta. Lo estamos utilizando para el complemento de la pregunta. Ya tenemos can you, que es el auxiliar, con nuestro pronombre al inicio de la oración. Así que no podemos ponerle is he. Cuando sí es inicio okay. de, de pregunta y sí estamos utilizando el verbo be, sí vamos a poner is he. But in this case, we can use is he at the end of the question. Okay, thank you, teacher. You're welcome. You tell me if he is. Okay, number eight. When is the party? Can you tell me when? In this case, we are not using where, we are using when, not the place, the date. 
This is at the end. Can you tell me where the party is? Can you tell me where the party is? Again, we are using in the day, not the place. Can you tell me? When the party is. Can you tell me when the party is? Can you tell me when the party is? When the party is. Okay. Can you tell me where the party when 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 when? Can you tell me when the Can you tell me when the party is? Can you tell me when the party is? Number nine, okay. Can you tell me if they, if they often, uh -huh, if they often go out, good. Can you tell me, in this case, we are using capital letter because it's the beginning of the sentence. Can you tell me if they often go out? Can you tell me if they often go out? Can you tell me if they often go out? Can you tell me if we need if they often go out. Can you tell me how often? In this case, no. If they if they often go out. Okay. Can you tell me if they often? In this case, we have a mistake here. Can you tell me if they often go out? Can you tell me if they often? Can you tell me if they, in this case, we are not using do. Okay, good. Number 10. What does he do on the weekend? Again, we are using, can you tell me? Can you tell me? Can you tell me what he does? In this case, we are not talking about they, we are uh, talking about him. What he, in this case, we are not using the past, we are using the present. Does at the weekend, at uh, the weekend. Can you tell me what he does at the beginning? Also, we can use on the weekend. Can you tell me what he does on the weekend? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What he does on the weekend? Can you tell me what he does on the Okay, okay, change this one on the weekend. Can you tell me what he does on the weekend? Can you tell me what he does on the weekend? Okay, 11, are the children on holiday this week? Can you tell me if the children are on a holiday? This week. 
Uh, in this case, it's weak, no, weekend, weak. Week. Can you tell me if the children are on holiday this week? Are on holiday this week? Can you tell me if the children are on holiday this week? Mm -hmm. On holiday this week. Holiday, good. This. Uh -huh. Week. Question mark. Okay, good. In this case, you have to write it. Uh, capital letter. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me if the children are on holiday this week? Again, capital letter at the beginning of the sentence. If the children are on holiday this week. Can you tell me the children are on holiday this week? Who is she? Who is she? Can you tell me who she is? Again, we are changing this one because we have a compliment. Can you tell me who she is? Again, we are using, can you tell me? Can you tell me who she is? Uh -huh. Can you tell me who she is? Can you tell me who she is? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me who she is? Can you tell me who she is? This is not that question. Can you tell me? What? What can I tell you? Can you tell me who she is? Okay. Why do you like traveling so much? Can you tell me why you like, in this case, we are using the ING. Can you tell me why you like traveling? Not with the two because we are not using the infinitive. Can you tell me why you like traveling so much? We are not using uh, the infinitive in that case, so we are not using the two with the verb. We are using the ING. Can you tell me why you like? Mm -hmm. Traveling? Good. The C, letter C is missing. Let her see it. Okay. Good. Can you tell me why you like traveling so much? Why you? In this case, we are not using this one. We are using ING. We are not using to. Why you like traveling so much? Good. Can you tell me why do we are not using do traveling so much? Question mark at the end. Don't forget that. Can you tell me why you like traveling? Again, we are not using infinity. Like traveling so much. Can you tell me why you like traveling so much? Number 14, does Lizzie like ice cream? Can you tell me? We are using, can you tell? Can you tell me if, remember, 
if Lizzy likes ice cream. Can you tell me if Lizzy likes? We are talking about she. So we are adding the S at the end of the verb like, because we are talking about she. Can you tell me if Lizzie likes ice cream? Can you tell me Lizzie with capital letter is a proper uh, noun. Lizzie likes ice cream. Can you tell me? Can you tell me if Lizzie likes ice cream? Lizzie likes ice cream. Again, capital letter in the name Lizzie. Can you tell me if this likes ice cream? Can you tell me we are going to change does for if? Likes, because we're using the rule. Him. Can you tell me if Lizzie, again, with a bit of letter, likes the rule of the third person when we use the S at the end of the verb? Again, Lizzie. And again, the verb. Okay. Are they from Chile? Can you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. can you tell me if they are from Chile? Can you tell me if they are from Chile? Can you tell me if they are from Chile? Can you tell me if they are from Chile? We are going to... Okay. Can you tell me if they are from Chile? Can you tell me? Mm -hmm. Can you tell me if they, here we are going to change, if they are from Chile. Can you tell me if they are, thank you. Where is the station? Can you tell me where the station is? The verb is at the end. Can you tell me where the station is? Can you tell me where the station is? Again. Can you tell me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Something is missing here. Can you tell me where the station? Can you tell me where the station is? Tian, where do you study Chinese? Can you tell me where you study Chinese? Can you tell me where you study Chinese? Can you tell me where you, okay, space? In space, okay. Can you tell me where do we are not using do? Chinese. 
Can you tell me where you study Chinese? 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 Can you tell me? Mm -hmm. Study mm -hmm. Chinese. Good. Where is the nearest supermarket? Mm -hmm. Can you tell me where the nearest supermarket is? Can you tell me where the nearest supermarket is? Can you tell me where the nearest supermarket is? Uh -huh. The super mar. Mm -hmm. The nearest supermarket is. Can you tell me where? Mm -hmm. mm, here. Mm -hmm. Do you drink coffee? Let me just eliminate this. Do you drink coffee? Can you tell me if you drink coffee? Can you tell me if you drink what? What do you drink? Coffee, water, juice, soda? Coffee. Can you tell me if you drink coffee? Can you tell me if you drink coffee? Can you tell me if you drink coffee? Good. Can you tell me if you drink coffee? Nice. Can you tell me if you drink coffee? Can you tell me if you drink coffee? Here. Can you tell me again? And the last one is the Richard I was always late uh, here. Oh, can you tell me? If Richard, we are not using this one. If Richard is always late. If Richard is always late, can you tell me if Richard is always late? Mm -hmm. Can you tell me if Richard, we need the verb to be here, is always late? Mm -hmm. Can you tell me if Richard, uh huh, good. It's always late. Can you tell me if he, who? In this case, we are using the name. If Richard is always late. Can you tell me if Richard is always late? Good, 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 good. That was amazing. Okay, thank you for the participation. It was really good to see um, you writing the questions. That that really good. So we have to change some things, but that is uh, the process, right? So right now is the end of the session. 
So we are going to uh, have the, um, the other session tomorrow. So see you tomorrow. Have a good night and thank you for your participation. Thank you, teacher. Good night. Thank you, teacher. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good, good, good night. Thank you. Good night. Tomorrow. Good night.